Sector Analyzer is a great tool for tracking student progress, not only academic, but also attendance and well-being, etc. And I think this quote from Professor Hattie sums it up. The school, not the individual teacher, should be the unit of analysis. And these two questions, what is the evidence that each student is gaining at least a year's progress for a year's import? And what is the school doing in the light of this evidence should be the basis for outside accountability. And if we look at the visible learning barometer. So Corwin Visible Learning Plus have given us permission to include some of their graphics in this presentation. So the visible learning research shows that a typical effect size of 0.4 is what we would expect for students of, over the course of one year. In other words, for one year's teaching or input, you should be expecting corresponding one year's growth in student learning. And so the effect size is a really useful tool that schools and should be added to schools and teachers repertoire in order to help them further understand the impact that they're having on students. So if we now look at this barometer, zero denotes that nothing's happening. The red zone denotes it's a negative impact. They're bored. They've got a lack of sleep they have been on summer vacation. The yellow shows that there's been a small positive impact, green area yields some positive impact, and the light blue influences are said to accelerate student achievement. And eventually that blue turns to dark blue. And these are the influences that considerably accelerate student achievement. But there needs to be in caution in interpreting the effects because there are nuances and details that sit with each of these. And certainly going to the Visible Learning Plus website and the Meta X website will give you that information. So each of those areas listed like classroom discussion, homework, mentoring are considered individual influences. And then if we take a step back and look at the visible learning research, it is the biggest body of educational research in the world. It's being run from the University of Melbourne and the Corwin Publishing House owns the global rights. And so Australia work in the Asia Pacific region, there are the Americas and then there is Europe and Africa and so on. And it was originally set up by Professor John Hattie who still oversees this but there is a team there working on all of this. And so they have examined over 1800 meta-analyses which have been made up of over 108,000 individual educational research studies from their published authors at Corwin right through to PhD theses, unpublished um, research and educational research. They've examined over 320 different influences like teacher clar clarity, feedback, homework, boredom and so on. And over a quarter of a billion students have been involved. So you can see it's a really significant piece of educational research. And Corwin have created this whole concept of progress versus achievement, which can be shown really easily in sector analyze. So if we drill down and look at this. So what we have here is this progress versus achievement grid that we've been given permission to show. So if we look at the progress uh, effect size, that vertical column is showing that everything to the right of that vertical means that they've made zero, more than 0.4 average increase in their learning across that year. Over here we have their achievement score. So the horizontal line is showing the average for that year level. So anything above the horizontal line shows that they're above, above average. Anything below shows they're below average. And then we can start to look at where students fall. So here the blue box is showing high progress, high achievement because they're to the right of the vertical and they're above the average achievement level. 
here, they are to the right of the progress uh, 0.4. So they've made great progress, but they're still below the average. And often schools find that they may have students who have particular learning needs fitting in here. The orange is showing that they're still doing really well. They've got high achievement. However, they're not making the progress that they should have. And then finally, in the red zone is showing the low progress, low achievement. So they haven't made the progress and they haven't achieved above the average. And in fact, they're below. And so then if we apply this to individual students and we look at this whole NAPLAN area here and calculate that and see where their dots fall. So this is Geordie. She's made really good progress. So she's high progress, high achievement. That is where you want all your students falling. This is Caitlin and Caitlin has made huge progress here but is still significantly below the average for that year level. Uh, however, her she has specific learning needs and so this really needs to be celebrated with her because she's made such significant progress. This is Sam falling into the orange area. Now Sam is a really able student, however has obviously been having a lovely time has made no progress really at all, but is still doing really well. And then this is Sarah. And Sarah has not made the progress and has not shown the achievement that you would be wanting for her year level. So you can see that this visible learning tool is a really useful tool to look at students' progress versus achievement. And you can use this for all of your standardized testing data. It's a great way to calculate the effect size. So if you're not a sector school, then we recommend that you go to the Visible Learning Plus website shown at the bottom of the screen to download this sample achievement calculator. And what it will do is you can drop in your NAPLAN literacy, put in your writing from 2015 to 2017 or 2017 to 2019. So you need two points of data and it will then auto calculate the average effect size and it will plot them on this progress versus achievement graph. So if I run it here, you can see here are students. So this is a class of 30 students. There's time one and time two here. So let's think this was 2017 to 2019. Let's say this was reading and it does the auto calculation for the effect size. Now it's worth remembering NAPLAN is done over every second year. So what they're getting should then be divided by two. So now then it positions them on this grid here. So you can quickly start to pull out here. Here's Grace. She's basically gone backwards from um, putting her time one as 726 and you can see that that instantly changes Grace's placing and also recalculates the average for that year level. So non-sector school, great tool, go and get it and download it. And then you can drop in uh, 50 students, 100 students and so on and you can put in the effect size, it will be showing it there and you get a really good snapshot of how your students have progressed in the last few years. Now, if we think about the standardized testing that many schools are running, and I know this is only a sample that you see on the screen. If you're a sector school, well, there's a lot that you can do here. So first of all, you can upload your all your standardized testing data straight into sector. So the squiggly line in the attendance and the marks book is giving you access to the individual child's standardized tests and you can then filter these depending on what you want to see in the subject that you're teaching. So this is Jason Bourne, it's showing all his nap plan here in the box and whisker. The yellow dot is Jason's dot. And so this information 
will always appear in the teacher's marks book and also in their attendance role. So some really useful information, particularly for your literacy and numeracy teachers here, but also for the other subject areas, if they wanna come in and the school is running some of the PAT science results and so on. So there's additional PAT results and they might be running other sorts of standardized testing information. Now, what does that look in terms of sector analyze? So here's my student, Elsa. And so that once that data is in the system, it can be surfaced in sector analyze and make it really easy for you as a teacher or a school leader to interpret. So over here, this is showing Alsa's average English results for the last four years. Over here are uh, showing her the NAPLAN effect sizes for the last two years for 2016 to 2018. And remember, you need to divide these by two because it was done over two years. And this is showing Alsa in comparison to the rest of her year level. So the blue line going across the top is showing Alsa's results in comparison to the average for her year level. So she, you get some key information about how Alsa is tracking in comparison to the rest of the year group. And over here is where you can start filtering on what are the individual standardized tests that you as a school want to look at and that data loads seamlessly. So here's an example here. This is showing Dylan Adkins, same process here. We've got his NAPLAN effect sizes calculated here. He's doing very well in numeracy, not so well in some of the other spelling and writing areas. And across the top, We've got his English result um, over the last four years and then the blue line down the bottom report is showing um, Dylan's results in comparison to the rest of the year level. And then we can take a step back and we can look at the whole school standardised testing information and plot it on this progress versus achievement grid for the last two years. So this is looking at 2018 to 2020, showing all of those individual standardized testing tools up there. And some of those shown on the screen have been are used internationally here. And then down the bottom here, you're seeing this explosion of all the data of each of those students across those year levels in their progress and achievement. And what you will notice is that the majority of students are sitting in the orange zone, which is low progress, but they're still achieving above the average. And if we now look at that load here live, you can see all of that data load live. And as you hover over each of those individual dots, you will be able to see the name of the student and also the results that they got. Then if we look at it and we drill down more to an individual student dashboard here, we've got an individual student, Jason Bourne, we filtered for particular subjects, we've got their score over time, their grade point average, along with an effective score. We've got their attendance and punctuality. The bigger the circle, the more lates that have been marked for them. And then over on the right hand side, we have their pastoral or wellbeing count. So the maroon is negative, light blue is neutral, and the dark blue shows the number of positive wellbeing notes that have been added to the system. This is another snapshot of a heat map of a teacher's marks book. And so down here, we have the color coding of the heat map. These are all of the students in the class. Here are the assessment tasks that have been done. And instantly when you start applying heat maps over the top, it starts showing some really interesting trends. And you can see here that this semester one exam 
none of the students have done very well. They're down in the red zone. So that's certainly going to be affecting their grade point average in terms of tracking their progress and achievement. And then if I take this one step further, this is an example of a dashboard showing an individual student's progress across a range of different areas here. We've got from here, we've got their academic subject results, standardized testing, late to class, pastoral well-being, entries, and their attendance rate. And all of that is at teacher's fingertips. And all they have to do is filter child by child. And then this whole return to school has put the whole student experience front and center and highlighted that many students are struggling to reconnect with full-time schooling and they're not really what we would call classroom match fit and schools are looking for solutions to a growing range of challenges around the attendance well-being engagement and also the learning progress and so this student engagement dashboard is an example of a dashboards that are available to schools that have sector analyzed at no cost and so you've got these barometers this is lauren allen so she's in year 10 you've got her grade point average her present in class well-being charts her participation tally and so on, also looking at her current reporting scores, her attendance rates, her contribution in terms of forums, and also the feedback. So a lot of data is being shown on that screen, making it really so much easier for schools to start getting a handle on students' individual engagement in what is happening in the classroom. And then finally, the student engagement can also be tracked through capturing student voice through the Marks book. So another tool that teachers can use to track student voice and track their level of engagement. And so for many schools, if you're a form teacher, a house teacher, a class teacher, that group that's looking after the whole child not just from a subject perspective, you can create a marks book here and start tracking key areas. So I've come in and this is attitude to school. So I've created a task and they've rated it one to five here. So teachers can put in their own questions and then the child can respond as to how, whether they feel they belong, they feel safe and so on. So a lot of information can be captured here. If I come back to the Marks book and I come to another area here like relationships and using also the star rating and the smiley faces and asking students if they have uh, a true friend and who their best friend might be. So capturing that information really simply and easily. And from time management, there's a text response, a star rating and a smiley faces. But in addition, there is also this rubric giving students feedback on where the teacher's placing them, but also capturing their voice in the process. So that's just a quick example of how teachers can also be tracking student engagement from their marks book area and that data can then be filtered through into sector analyze. And then this finally brings me to Corwin and Visible Learning Plus. We're often asked by schools so we understand we've got the tools, but we're not sure the PD that we should be doing to support our teachers here. So the Corwin have very kindly given us these graphics that we can add, have been able to add to this presentation. And they provide individual tailored for workshops to schools based on all of the research and evidence that they are constantly gathering and analyzing and you can see here on the screen there are a number of really useful workshops that are available the student engagement one run by dr ann berry 
if schools are running professional learning communities and really want to unpack what that means and in many schools make them much more effective. There are the visible learning for literacy and for maths teachers, along with the coaching that sits around looking at teachers impact and so on. And so if we drill down a little bit further here on the right hand side, you can see this re reimagining student engagement. If you go onto their website, there's some uh, free webinars that schools can access and a lot of free webinars that are available to schools. But if schools want to really start looking at interpreting and using evidence to drive practice, then looking at this whole school approach to developing a shared language of learning and really looking at these high impact strategies, the place to go is Corwin uh, who run the Visible Learning Plus here. And I've explained these, but there are a range of workshops available to schools. And then finally, how do they do it? Well, it can be face to face, there can be synchronous live sessions that can be done across a short period of time. They can be asynchronous, self-paced that you give to schools, but it's really working with their team and tr translating that research into practice. And they've partnered with over 1300 schools across Australia, and they're also working in the Asia Pacific area. So if schools want to learn more and you haven't got sector analyzed, but if you're a sector school, then the first thing to do is upload your standardized testing data into the system and make that visible to your teachers. Then talk to your um, customer success manager and, looking at get, and look at getting sector analyzed and then start to subscribe to the standardized testing dashboards to really start tracking student progress and go and have a look at the Visible Learning Plus website with the URL is shown there on the screen for all for the significant number of resources and free webinars that are available or, or alternatively talk to the team at Visible Learning. Thank you.